Hello everyone. Today I'll be talking about how we standard, standardize it, authentication flows in our kick lock environments and how we use over for efficient authorization. I'm Yuta Kato from CyberAgent. Here is the agenda. I'll start by introducing myself, then explain the issues with, uh, with our old authentication flows. Next, I'll show how we unified them and why we choose OPA. Finally, I'll share the results and benefits we've seen. About me. <coughs> I'm a software engineer at CyberAgent. I joined the project using Kicklock last year. And why, why we are unifying our authentication flow? We had to support hundreds of legacy IDP clients quickly, but building separate authentication flows for each client wasn't scalable. It would cost dependency on individual developers and make maintenance more complex and fragile. Also, if someone was absent, incident response could be delayed. And clearly, we needed a unified approach. How we unify our authentication flow? We designed standardized authentication levels from basic ID pass to geography based constraints. Here's how it works and Level 1, ID and password. Level 2, as OTP. Level 3, as client certificate. Level 4, as location based restriction. At the end of the, of the authentication flow, we apply authorization using OPA. In our architecture, we integrate the authorization logic into the third part of the authentication flow, which is slightly different from standard Kicklock usage, so it's something to be aware of. Why use the policy engine? And many legacy clients had unique requirements. For example, allow access from outside Japan on June 2nd only. So we needed to support both permanent policy rules and, and temporary exceptions. And hard coding this logic was too risky and inflexible. And how the policy engine solved it? We built a custom SPI to delegate authorization from Kicklock to OPA. This keeps authentication in Kicklock and authorization in OPA, creating a clear separation of concerns. We write policy as code, which improves readability and enables Git-based review. We also use CI-CD to deploy policies independently of Kicklock. Why we choose OPA? We compared OPA and OpenFGA. OPA was more flexible and maintainable for our use case. Though OpenFGA had better visualization, OPA's Lego language gives us more power. OPA also fits our GitOps workflow better and doesn't require DB schema management. Results and benefit. A reduce it maintenance overhead. A thanks to unified flows, we reduce it maintenance costs and avoided knowledge silos. Enhanced security and flexibility. Authorization logic is now clearly separated, easier to audit, and safe to update. An independent CICD for authorization. And most importantly, a policy change can be deployed, deployed via GitHub without touching Kicklock itself. This gives up agility and control. I thank you for listening. Thank you for interesting uh, presentation. Uh, what kind of SPI did you implement it? Authenticator SPI? Uh, authentication, uh, authenticator SPI. Ah, I see. Thank you for, yeah. Uh, 
あの比較のところで、OpenFGA がある、キーベルのを使わなは比較はされてないんですかはい、あキーコロッケですかあ。キーベルの、キーベルのっていうポリシーエンジンが、オーバーと同じぐらいの機能のポリシーエンジンがあると思うんですけど、キーベルト、キーベルト、キーベルトは使って知らない知らないですね、わかりまし、ね、いいです。Any other questions? No? Okay. So thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you so much.